All right, and it looks like we are live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Junior, and I definitely want to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital, where I keep you all well informed of all the technology that is going on around us in our ever-growing digital world. So today is July the 12th, 2022, and today I just have a few things to talk about with you here. Uh, one of them is being NFT marketplaces. Uh, the largest one out there is OpenSea, but there are two companies that have come out with their own NFT marketplace here. Uh, so I just want to keep you up to date with that. The other one is Bitcoin mining. Uh, if you don't know what mining is, we'll touch on that here a bit later. But in Texas, Bitcoin mining has halted a little bit just because there is now starting to become a power shortage out there. And then the last one being BCIs. BCIs just stands for Brain Computer Interface. And it's all about how we humans are now going to start interfacing with um, robots, machines, anything with a computer in it. All right. So everyone stay tuned. It's going to be a great show um, and we'll jump right into it. All right. So the first item on the block is a little bit about BCI, which again, it just stands for Brain Computer Interface. Um, but before we jump full force into BCIs, I just want to give you a brief on what we have here, which is a pilot using their body movement in order to control a drone. This is just a quick YouTube video that I want to show you all here. So, forget joysticks. This jacket is controlling a drone using body motion. Researchers in Switzerland say torso movements are more intuitive and precise and could help drone pilots on search and rescue missions. And in this case, it's important to pilot the drone correctly, but also to look at the, the image you're getting from the camera around the drone. And if you're too focused on the piloting, well, you cannot really look at the, the image provided by the drone. So our idea was to develop a method that would be easier, simpler, maybe more intuitive or natural to control the drone. Uh, and this, we decided to do this uh, using your body movements. A VR headset shows the drone's point of view. And a gesture control data gloves gives simple commands, like takeoff and landing. Initial testing used body-worn infrared markers to find out what was most natural to novice drone pilots. They were tasked with flying a virtual drone through a set course. We ended up with this very simple set of movements in which you will simply use your upper body to control this drone. So to go down, you will bend forward, to go up, you will bend backwards, and then sidewards to turn. Called the fly jacket, one small motion sensor on the back can now translate all pilot movements. These poles are just for arm support during long flights, though the team observed test participants seem to naturally spread their arms bird-like for extra stability. They're now investigating adding more feedback from the drone. This includes a new fly jacket that would... So I'm pretty sure as a kid, everybody has pretended to be in an airplane, throwing out your arms, running around all over the place. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that, takes me back a little bit where um, you can actually just go ahead and actually now fully pilot a drone uh, just using your arms, using your body movement, using your torso and stuff like that. Um, one thing that it also reminded me of as I was sitting there watching the video, um, have you ever seen one of the Harry Potter movies uh, where I forget, oh man, I forget, I think it was Snape's, I forget the actual like wizard magician's name that was on there, but he was actually, it was when they were playing the game Quidditch and um, the guy was controlling, I think, Harry Potter's broomstick or something like that, just with the flick of his finger and making it go all haywire and crazy and stuff. Well, um, that's kind of what it reminds me of as well, just being able to control uh, a robotic feature with your body, with your movements and stuff like that. And that I actually don't mind too much. Um, but the issue comes in, in my opinion, when we get into what they call BCIs. And... I have an article here from October 2nd, 2017, where we talk about BCIs and being able to control a drone. Um, in my opinion, this may or may not be the route to go. Um, it's a whole wave of new technology that's coming out um, and that it brings up a whole lot of questions uh, that I feel it needs a whole lot of answers. We're still all in the early stages, uh, but as you can see, 
this article was in 2017 and it's already being in in play it's already being in process uh, so this article is really just about how they're now no longer just having a single operator uh, being able to control one drone you can now have a fleet of drones being operated um, by a human being uh, just by interfacing that um, computer chip with your brain uh, and this is done through two methods the first method being uh, think of a swim cap you just put a hat over your head with a whole bunch of leads onto it um, and it can kind of control your different wavelengths that comes through your brain or you can actually get a internal chip installed uh, so I'll jump into that here shortly but I just want to kind of go through this article um, they say the main purpose of this of course they want to broadcast all the positive sides to it um, but the main purpose of this is search and rescue missions they can have uh, instead of again one person controlling a drone so if you need like 20 drones that means you need 20 drone pilots versus now if you can just have one pilot and then 20 drones being controlled by that one pilot you can also do firefighting with it again this is all pretty cool stuff I, I agree uh, in that standpoint if you can fight a fire with like 30 drones going inside of a burning building uh, putting out a fire that will be pretty awesome uh, but again when you start thinking of neurologically uh, linking the brain to computers uh, it starts to you know get a little get a little scary there uh, agricultural analysis um, entertainment uh, if you haven't seen before they have drone shows instead of fireworks in a lot of places um, and then also cyber physical surveillance systems um, so I just want to jump over here to another article where it says brain computer interfaces are coming will you be ready this one was um, created in August 27th 2020 uh, again I always leave the description I always leave the link to all of these articles uh, in the description of this YouTube video so uh, definitely go back and check these out as well but this is just talking about back in 2016 uh, the Arizona State University, which I guess transferred over to the uh, University of Delaware, actually created one of those wavelength caps that can take all of your uh, brain activity and transfer it over to a, um, uh, a machine, essentially. So the fleet of mind-controlled drones is just one real-life example of BCI explored in an initial assessment of BCI by Rand Corporation researchers. Um, and again had a video about that uh, how do BCI's work BCI technology allows a human brain and an external device to talk to one another to exchange signals it gives humans the ability to directly control machines without physical constraints of the body uh, in my opinion this is not too bad again I have a laptop here I have a microphone cell phone everybody uses technology every single day um, and we control it just by our physical touch so by just putting on a hat and be able to think out what I wanted to actually do um, is not too, too crazy. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit out there, but I can, I can actually deal with it. Uh, but as you can see here, once you kind of go down a little bit on this article, uh, they have this little microchip that is about the size of a grain of sand. Uh, they are calling this the neural dust. And this neural dust will actually get implanted. The reason why they will want it to be implanted is because once you, um, uh, what's it called, once you start getting into all of that neurological uh, technology, you get a stronger signal the closer it is to your brain. So just having a wave cap on, you have uh, layers of hair, you have layers of skin, you have layers of muscle, you have a skull. All of that stuff plays a role inside of how well this will actually work. Uh, but if you go ahead and implant it, all of that is not gets removed. Uh, you do have to have go through surgery for it, so you have that added risk of the surgery, um, health implications and stuff like that. But in this case, they're saying that hey, you know, it's it's I don't want to say it's worth it, but it's just kind of worth it. Uh, as you can see here, they have a world of possibilities, um, which in my opinion, as the first paragraph on that. It's saying that they would use it through uh, through military lens. Um, so already, <laughs> because war is one of the most fraught and complicated scenario scenarios imaginable. Uh, if I can use it in a war, I could probably use it 
uh, during a natural disaster like a tsunami or an earthquake. Um, so yeah, so as you can see here, already they're starting to think about well, how can they use this to win wars and all that stuff, which in my opinion shouldn't be what our first thought is when you think of, um, you know, managing the world and stuff like that. But hey, who am I to actually say what we should be using this technology for? Um, of course, these are probably the same people that are creating the technology, uh, so they're creating it for these reasons. Um, I think there was another thing. Researching tomorrow's technology today, uh, as with emerging technology, BCI carries many risks and unknowns, of course. Um, oh, yeah, so they were also saying that these BCIs uh, will help people, you know, kind of get over their fears. Uh, what happens when military personnel are sent into battle and with a reduced sense of fear? Uh, in my opinion, that's I, I think fear is actually a good thing sometimes. Uh, if you're running into a building with a bomb in it, yeah, of course, you might be trying to self save, you know, 100 people that's inside the building. Uh, so you just kind of run in there blind without any fear. Uh, but I believe fear was put, you know, inside uh, of our mindset for a reason. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a bad thing, in my opinion, if you just completely remove all of that. Um, so again, you guys can always just go back and check this whole article. It's a, quite a long article, so I'm not going to go through everything here. Um, but I always want to, you know, just bring this up to you guys so that you guys are aware of what's going on um, and, you know, do further research on it. Uh, don't let them just go ahead and implant, you know, BCIs on you or in you without having to understand the full implications of it um, so that you have, you know, that freedom of choice in that case. All right, so the next thing here is going to be NFT marketplaces. So Coinbase, uh, if you're into cryptocurrency, you've heard of Coinbase for sure. It's one of the largest market, um, I would say, exchanges out there for cryptocurrency. They have their own Coinbase wallet and all that stuff. And back in April of 2022, they came out with their own NFT marketplace, uh, OpenSea was the largest one that was out there but coinbase went ahead and i think it was like november of 2021 announced that they were going to come out with their own marketplace for nfts uh when it was really booming back then uh, right now the nft industry isn't really booming as much so i'm really curious to see how the uh, marketplace has been doing it is still currently in beta uh, and it looks like they are in the process of dropping a uh, new NFT here for Bill Murray, uh, who is an American actor. And this was in July 8, 2022, uh, which I believe, uh, yeah, I have the link pulled up here. Um, doing an airdrop July 15th at 3 p.m. for the Bill Murray. Um, and the one thing about the NFT marketplace for Coinbase is that they want theirs to be more social media based. Uh, so they have a, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have an account for uh, this NFT marketplace. Uh, if you did want an account, all you would need is a uh, NFT wallet or uh, what's it called? A um, digital wallet to sign in with, with and everything. Coinbase wallet, MetaMask wallet connect. Um, they're doing away. They're trying to be all Web3 friendly. Uh, so they're doing away with the username, password thing. Just connect your wallet and you're good to go. Uh, and then from there, you know, you have like a TikTok account where you can see all of your different followers. Uh, you can actually um, interact with other people through comments. Uh, you'll actually have all of your, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, your feed. Dang, I forget what it's called. Um, basically, your feed of things that you like, the popular ones, the, the featured ones and stuff like that. Um, NFTs in that case. So what you would end up doing is, you know, just like the OpenSea, if you're familiar with OpenSea, um, you would just click on here. You would see this um, this person's account. You will see all of the NFTs that they own. Uh, You'll see, I think, all the NFTs that they have there as well. You can follow them. Um, I believe the ones that they are selling, you can purchase and all that stuff as well. So uh, again, it's kind of more in beta. So we have a lot to view um, in the next coming of days, um, months, weeks, years, or whatever, uh, for it to really pick up. Again, 
NFT market is currently uh, at a bear market right now, but there's going to be a lot that comes out from it. Uh, and then from there, the Coinbase NFT kind of sparked a NFT marketplace for uh, GameStop. Uh, you can see here this is also in beta. But now GameStop has just released their own NFT marketplace, uh, which I believe came out just today, the um, uh, the 12th of July here. Uh, and from what I heard through the re last report was that they, I think they sold and then 24 hour was like $50,000 worth of NFTs. Um, and I have mixed reviews about this. So the main thing with these NFTs is really all about the utility. Uh, what they can provide and stuff like that. Um, so when I think of GameStop, I think of, you know, like the world's largest video game um, seller out there, provider. Um, so I would think that they have an NFT marketplace that's going to be associated with their games. Um, you can have a whole bunch of digital assets um, that is attached to them. But from what it sounds like, their NFTs are not actually um, utilized for that. Um, they're just images really um so uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure i think this was the biggest one everybody keeps talking about um was a basically a jpeg of a running um game boy or something like that and it's actually selling for quite a lot of money so here is like 10 grand for this um uh for this running game boy um eight grand for that one 700 bucks for that one so um <clears throat> i'm not sure what's going to happen again we are in a downturn of a market bear market for our uh, nfts and stuff like that so it's going to be quite interesting to see how you know gamestop really turns this around they they pushed this out they rolled out the launch during the bear market uh, which is actually quite interesting in my opinion um but if you know, if these games or if these NFTs aren't really attached to games, um, do we really need another NFT marketplace? You know, you can always piggyback off another one and, and, and make it better, of course. Uh, but I'm trying to see how exactly do they plan to, you know, make this the number one NFT marketplace um, for people who love NFTs. Uh, of course, GameStop has partnerships with a whole bunch of Again, you can always um, get started with your um, your digital wallet. Um, get the game. I guess they have a GameStop wallet now, which I actually didn't know that as well. Um, but they have all a bunch of partnerships with you know different uh, large video game providers. Um, I, I don't know Epic Games, Activision, all that stuff. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how they plan to uh, keep that relationship alive with them, but also. When you think of NFTs, you think of Web3, you think of everything is user-based, um, taking back control of all of your stuff, all of your content. Um, so with GameStop, you know, having all of that heavy relationship with some of these larger companies, um, how do they plan to uh, relinquish some of that over to the users um, through the NFT marketplace? All right, and the last thing I have here today um, is a little thing going on in Texas over in the United States. Bitcoin miners are getting paid to shut down and give electricity back to the power grid. Um, so Texas, if you don't know, uh, became like the number one it spot to basically mine Bitcoin, mine cryptocurrency. Um, if you don't know what mining is, it's just basically... Cryptocurrency is basically an algorithm, um, a whole bunch of bits of code and stuff like that. They need to be decoded, essentially. Um, and it takes a lot of computing power in order to decode that. So you would set up a mining tower or what have you, um, and just go ahead and let that computer run and run and run um, uh, all those bits and pieces of code in order to go ahead and create new Bitcoin, essentially. Um, and then from there... It could actually be placed onto the blockchain. People can buy it, sell it, what have you. Um, so with that mining, it just takes up a lot of computing power to do. Um, and the whole big thing around it is that uh, if you mine, like say one Bitcoin 
and that one Bitcoin is worth $10,000. But the amount of energy to get that one Bitcoin is like $50,000. It's not really worth it in order to do that. Um, so for one Bitcoin, if you can mine it for like 100 bucks, well, then now your return on investment there is actually really profitable. Um, but what's going on is that the Texas um, power grid right now is on the verge of a basically power shortage. And they're asking people, even with like regular air conditioners in their home, they're asking people to, you know, go ahead and stop using all of that power uh, because essentially their grid can't handle it. Um, so when they ask the cryptocurrency community uh, to go ahead and stop using so much power, um, they essentially said yes. It was, of course, <laughs> with a little bit of a fee there. Um, but that's the thing with cryptocurrency. People who love cryptocurrency, it's a real big community about around it. Um, they are always happy to, I don't say always, but majority of people, they're, they're pretty happy to, you know, oblige by certain things. Uh, I'm not, can't say the same for large, you know, corporations. Um, let's say if Tesla was asked to stop making Teslas for a week or something like that, would he actually, well, I don't know. He's, Elon Musk is, he's pretty nice. I, I think he's, I think he would actually do it. I'm not sure about, uh, some other people like this say Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook or whatever, not to call out any names or anything like that but just for example um would facebook go down for a week just to save the power grid um who knows uh, but again the cryptocurrency community out there in texas uh they said they freed up 1000 megawatts of electricity uh to be distributed back to the texas power grid um, and they said that is equal to about one percent of texas total grid capacity uh, which is, in my opinion, actually quite a bit. Um, if you think about it, 1% of all of your electrical power uh, just being used to mine Bitcoin is is, is actually a lot. Um, and who knows how many other people that didn't shut down. It could be you know up to like 2% or something like that. Um, so yeah, so if you're a Bitcoin miner, cryptocurrency miner, just always be aware of what's going on with that. Uh, if you're in Texas and you didn't know that <laughs> you could right now be getting paid to not mine, um, just a heads up. This is uh, this is actually coming. Uh, when did this come out? Uh, July. Yeah, just just today. So um, uh, I think there was one other thing I wanted to mention here. Um, Oh yeah, I think I already mentioned it. Bitcoin mines are only profitable so long as the cost of the energy they use remains below the value of Bitcoin gain. Um, that calculus is why miners seek out jurisdictions in Texas where electricity prices are relatively low. Uh, but a weather-induced spike because it was like 110 degrees out in Texas uh, this whole past weekend uh, in demand across the grid inflates the cost of electricity and reduces profitability for Bitcoin miners. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, so you guys let me know. Definitely let me know what you guys think about all of this. Um, do you think we should have more NFT marketplaces? Uh, or what would you like to see from these NFT marketplaces uh, in order to make them better or in order to have them being used by the users a whole lot easier? Um, I think with the social media aspect of it uh, from Coinbase NFT marketplace is a step in the right direction. Um, because you can possibly, you know, tip people for, you know, even though you might not want to buy their actual NFT, you can possibly just tip them and say, hey, good job on the artwork. Um, good job on your NFT marketplace or your NFT collection um, and so on and so forth. Um, definitely want to know what you guys think about the different BCI technology that is out there. Uh, again, me, myself, I never plan to get a implant for it. Um, I could look into some of the, because uh, I mean, that's, you know with the virtual reality headsets and stuff like that um just immersing yourself into uh, a whole different world uh putting on a cap for maybe an hour or something like that uh just to control some drones or something uh it actually sounds pretty cool i would probably try to use the <laughs> body movement one first before actually uh using you know some um uh brain technology because again all of that all of that on your brain um, is not good. Even cell phones, cell phones have uh, power that's being emitted off of it. 
um, and then it's, our bodies aren't actually used to um, handling all of that that um, that it provides. So, um, as always, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, definitely check back in here tomorrow. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all later.